I've got some names for you. Double Drummer, Yellow Belly, Red Eye, Amber Tail, Razor Grinder, Green Grocer, Cherry Nose, Black Squeaker. Yeah, Australia really is Cicada Central. Welcome to One Minute Bugs. Australia is home to more species of cicadas than anywhere else on Earth. There are about 350 species described so far, with about 400 species yet to be described. It's estimated there could be as many as a thousand species of cicada in Australia. The common names of cicadas that I referred to earlier, such as um, green grocer and yellow belly and amber tail, reflect the appearance of certain species. Other names like drummer, squeaker and grinder refer to the sound of certain species. Some cicadas are notorious for the noise they make, but that sound is males singing for females. In other words, it's a mating call. I've got this great book on cicadas by Max Moulds. Thoroughly recommend it. And on the razor grinder, he says, a loud harsh call and from a distance resembles the sound of grinding metal. Razor grinder doesn't occur in this region, but the green grocer cicada does. A large species, you know, 60 to 70 millimetres long, including the wings. It can produce a call of about 120 decibels. That's like the volume of a siren or something. Here is the sound of a green grocer cicada, turned down somewhat. The green grocer cicada is unusual because it has several colour forms. There is a yellow form, commonly known as Yellow Monday, which occurs in this region along with the more common green form, the green grocer. There is a much rarer turquoise form called Blue Moon, and there's a couple of others called Masked Devil and Chocolate Soldier. Yep, I don't know. <laughs> but the common species on my property is the Red Eye Cicada. It's quite a large species, as you can see here, and it has a distinctive song. To me, these guys are the sound of summer where I live, and I don't find them annoying at all. Occasionally, red-eye cicadas can appear in very large numbers. Here is an account by the eminent zoologist James Kershaw from a collecting trip on the outskirts of Melbourne in 1896. He says, I was astonished at the enormous numbers of these insects the males of which kept up such a continuous din, in brackets, their so-called music, as to be positively deafening, so probably not a fan of their music. And he says, I was surprised at the swarms of the black species, the red eye, which, to put it mildly, were in thousands. The branches of many of the trees were black with them. During the number of years I have been collecting in Victoria, I have never before known these insects to appear in such enormous numbers. Cicadas have a life cycle of egg to nymph to adult. In other words, hemimetabolus, and I've got a bug basics about insect life cycles. You can refer to that one if you like. Eggs are laid in slits in branches of the food plant, whatever they are, depending on the species of cicada. The nymphs hatch from those eggs and drop to the ground and disappear underground through cracks or, or whatever and dig a cell next to the roots where they begin feeding. They pass through five or six instars or molts um, which can take nine months to several years depending on the species involved. Green grocer cicada nymphs are underground for about six years. The final stage nymphs eventually dig their way um, back out of the soil, climb up a tree, usually only about a metre or two, where they split, from which the adult emerges, leaving behind the empty uh, nymph skin, and some people refer to them as cicada shells. This is an arty shot of mine from many years ago, you know, decades ago, when I was into dramatic lighting. Adult emergence usually occurs at night, and then the life cycle starts all over again. The adult cicadas themselves uh, live for, you know, two to four weeks, something like that. Like spittlebugs, cicadas are sapsuckers and feed on xylem fluid. 
either from the roots as nymphs or from branches as adults. As you know from that uh, spittlebug video, xylem fluid is very watery and the cicadas release copious amounts of excess fluids. This can be a bit annoying when it's dropping from trees from above. And it's colloquially known as cicada rain. 20 years ago, I saw something amazing. Up in the Barma forest, there were many thousands of small cicadas, about 35 millimetres long, all over the trunks of the trees. And the cicada shells were um, lower down on the trunks. I believe that cicada is the clicking amber tail. One morning on the banks of the Murray River, I saw a large flock of hundreds of wood swallows. I'm pretty sure it was a combined flock of masked wood swallows and white-browed wood swallows. The birds were picking cicadas off the trees. They were starting up the top and then spiralling down the trunk all the way down, feeding on cicadas the whole time, and some wood swallows even ended up on the ground feeding on cicadas. I guess this highlights that even though cicadas can be annoying to some people, they do fulfil important roles in the environment. At the very least, they are food for other animals. If you haven't seen the spittlebug video I referred to, it's up here. Thanks for watching.